All right, case nine. I can take this one. This is okay. a square punch, really deep punch. And you can see some inflammation cell, but it seems to be loose the fibroblast histiocyte in the dermis. And then the collagen bundle, really thick. Good. And then the nexal structure, especially the acrine gland, they lose kind of the fat, maybe. And this stem also lose hair follicle. So it could be uh, morphia. Very good, yeah. So from from low power, people sometimes say this is the square, or I guess more likely rectangle punch biopsy sign, that the punch has this like very like perfectly squared off look at the top, like the epidermis goes across and then it's straight down. And that's because the dermis is so dense, densely packed with the more dense than usual collagen. And so uh, then that's that's a good clue for morphia. Um, and so what morphia is, is it's localized, uh, uh, like a localized form of scleroderma, right? So in some patients get uh, a similar appearance who have actually like systemic sclerosis or, or a systemic form of scleroderma, but then other people get this localized cutaneous form that we call morphia. And it often um, presents as kind of like a firm, uh, kind of depressed, uh, indurated uh, plaque. Uh, on the trunk and sometimes has a kind of slightly purple violaceous look clinically. Other times it can have a linear appearance and uh, particularly on the forehead where it's being called in coup de sab. Uh, I'm sorry for my French speaking listeners for my poor pronunciation. I have a hard time with the, the French R and uh, basically all the other French sounds, but en coup de sabre, uh, which is like the cut of the saber, uh, supposedly. So it's this linear uh, appearance uh, that looks like you kind of like a linear scar on the forehead. So those are the signs for morphia clinically. Microscopically, morphia can be hard to diagnose because it looks, if you ignore some of the, the clues, it can kind of look a lot like the normal dermis, right? If you take a punch biopsy from the back or the abdomen, the normal skin of the trunk, the dermis looks kind of similar to morphia at first glance. This is another one of those when the entire dermis is abnormal in its collagen pattern or collagen density, it's hard to tell that it's abnormal unless you have some normal next to it. And then you're like, oh yeah, this is definitely thicker, more densely packed collagen bundles. The bundles of collagen get kind of thicker and they get packed closely together and don't have as much white space between them. But sometimes you can kind of see a similar look to that artifactually, just depending on how the biopsy gets processed and how it looks. So just be aware of that, that sometimes you'll think, ooh, this could be morphia. And I think it's like a classic trick on, on exams where it's actually just normal back skin. Um, but some of the clues, like you said, Li Ping, an infiltrate of lymphocytes and plasma cells can be really helpful, especially in the early kind of inflammatory phase of morphia. A lot of times too, as morphia progresses, you'll get real dense sclerosis in the collagen up here. And the deeper dermal collagen early on sometimes looks more normal. So sometimes you'll get kind of a, an interface between dense sclerosis and then kind of more normal collagen. And there tends to be more lymphocytes and plasma cells kind of near the border of that that uh, advancing edge of sclerosis. We do not see that here. It's kind of more more patchy and perivascular inflammation here. Uh, uh, other things to keep in mind that can kind of give you this appearance is uh, erythema chronica migraines or Lyme's disease. Uh, Lyme disease can have an infiltrate of lymphocytes and plasma cells and can have some sclerotic collagen in the dermis. And you know, you can also think of syphilis. I don't usually think of it as causing sclerosis of the dermis, but perivascular with, with lymphs and plasma cells. Think about syphilis, think about um, uh, tumid lupus. Those could be other things that you could put in your differential. But here, the sclerotic collagen is really dense and really nice and well-developed in this case. Classically, in morphia, the papillary dermis is spared. So the papillary dermis here still has, if it comes into focus here, very fine, delicate collagen fibers, very wispy. It's hard to appreciate on a scan, but if you go and look at at normal dermis versus, say, someone with a really chronic uh, chronic eczematous dermatitis or lichen simplex chronicus uh, that's been scratched and rubbed. If you go and look, the dermal collagen in the papillary dermis is very fine and delicate normally, like we see here. And then the reticular dermis is big, thick bundles of collagen. Like I said, collagen patterns are hard to pick up on, so it takes practice. So it's practice on normal skin. Find someone who's got normal skin, you know, on a melanoma excision specimen or something like that, or a nevus excised from a young person. Go look at the skin out on the side to see what normal papillary dermis, normal reticular dermis look like. I also have a skin histology video. If you're watching this online, you can go and look at that. It talks at length about that. Um, whereas other things like chronic 
chronic reactive things begin to make dense, dense, uh, uh, thicker collagen bundles in the papillary dermis. The reason I'm bringing this up is that there's another entity that can overlap with morphia, and that is um, lichen sclerosis atrophicus and LSA lichen sclerosis hyalinizes and makes sclerotic collagen in the papillary dermis, but tends to spare the deeper um, reticular dermis. And then there is such an entity as lichen sclerosis slash morphia overlap, where you get hyalinization of the, you get lichen sclerosis changes up top and morphia changes down below. So anyway, just so you know, those are some things that you could uh, need to know about in your differential. And I like that you pointed out what happens over time is that the fat that normally exists around the the uh, eccrine coils begins to get squished out and eventually the eccrine coils are gone. Now here, there's still some residual fat, um, so it's not totally removed them, but look at, this is a pretty big piece of skin and there's like almost no adnexal structure here. There's one eccrine coil and one or two little hair follicles that are hanging on for dear, or one, just one hair follicle, or ec, maybe that's an eccrine duct, I can't tell from here, that's hanging on for dear life. And in here, I think we had uh, a little bit of eccrine coil that's been crushed to death by this advancing sclerotic collagen. So in well-developed morphia, you'll see that. You'll see this kind of strangulation and co compression and crushing of the fat, and then eventually the coil itself, and also the hair follicles. And eventually, you'll get just dense sclerotic collagen with no residual indexal structures if it's really well-developed. Um, if you have plasma cells present, that's a good sign that probably it's a localized um, a form of scleroderma, it's, it's a morphia. But the other thing is, I, I think if, if there's not good clinical info, it's important to point out that s systemic sclerosis can have a very similar appearance microscopically to morphia. So if there's any clinical concern, they need to do further workup in the patient because that comes with a lot of different uh, clinical abnormalities. All right.